Hey everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of BSD Synergy. I'm your host, Mason Egger, and today's episode is entitled Hard to Port, Hard to Starboard! The Kraken is coming! Read the runner! Hard to Port, then Hard to Starboard! Read the runner! Hard to Port! No, not really. There is no Kraken. Uh, just free BSD ports. <laughs> Which, for some, feels like, you know, an ancient mythical beast that rises out of the depths and tries to kill you. But it's not. They're actually really easy to use, and we're going to go over that today's video. So what are ports? Ports are a way of managing third-party software and giving you the ability to compile this third-party software extremely easily with almost no hassle. Traditional Unixes really didn't have a package manager. Packages are really kind of a, a byproduct of Linux. Um, so in the old days, you would actually have to, you know, download the source code for this third-party software that you want, and you'd have to change things to it. You'd have to change header files or manifest constants or even rewrite certain parts of it for it to work on your operating system, or, you'd, you know, otherwise you'd have to port it over to your operating system, hence where the FreeBSD ports tree comes from. The FreeBSD ports tree is a collection of all third-party software that can be installed on FreeBSD, and, uh... According to the FreeBSD manual, one, the day that I looked this up, there are over 24,000 ports inside the FreeBSD ports tree, and I will even leave a uh, link in the description below of the GitHub repository where all of these ports live. Now, while FreeBSD does have a package manager, which is the PKG package manager, um, it, a lot of people still use the port system, and it's actually more traditional way of using Unix is to actually build things from source rather than just do a, a package install. Now, this is usually the part that trips Linux users up. Most Linux users are just, you know, I want to install something on my, you know, machine. Yum install curl. Oh, look, there it is. You know, that, that while it can be done in FreeBSD, ports really are the preferred way of installing things. So a lot of Linux users uh, don't really have much experience with installing things from source. And usually when they do, they have the same problems sometimes that the ports had where, you know, you have to change things or make it work. The FreeBSD port system makes installing from source super easy and it's a really good way of getting software that is built for your hardware. In fact, all binary packages that are created for FreeBSD are actually built from the ports tree. Now, if you want the ports tree, you do have to specify it at installation or you can use uh, the port snap tool, which we'll go over in a little bit, on, to be able to get the ports onto your system if you don't specify it at install. So let's go ahead and move on over to the ports tree. So all ports in the FreeBSD ports tree are under slash user slash ports. And if we do an ls, these are the hierarchies of all the ports for the FreeBSD system. Now, if I want to check and, you know, let's get the new ports. You actually would run a port snap. Port snap. Too bad I can't type. Fetch. And this would get a zip file of all the ports. And then you would do extract. You can either do these as separate commands or link them on top of each other to extract the ports. Now, this takes a really long time. Uh, because the ports tree is relatively huge, it also depends on your network connectivity and how many resources you have given your machine. Again, I do a lot of my stuff in VirtualBox because I need an easy way of being able to capture output. So one core with one gig of RAM, this is going to take a really long time and nobody wants to sit here and watch through that. To update your ports also, you can do port snap update and I already know that my ports tree is up to date because I was testing this out earlier. If you need any information on how to use the ports tree, simply go to the man page, RTFM. Now to actually search for ports inside of this, you would simply go into the slash user slash ports directory and do a make search, and then you would do name equals, and let's go ahead and search for, not Apache, that'll be large, and the Django stuff will be large too. Uh, let's just do LSOF. That's a so that doesn't dump out too much good. Uh, the only bad thing about using these VMs is, you know, this console scrolling is an absolute nightmare. So LSOF, there you go. We have that right there. There's an easy port. And this tells you all the information you need to know. The port, the path of it's very important. That's the path you're going to navigate to whenever you want to do actually do the install. Uh, info, you know, short little description. Who the maintainer is. So if it's broken, you can send them an email. Um, some dependencies. And also a URL where you can go to figure out about some of these things. So let's go ahead and install something from ports. Let's go ahead and, you know, do a search on CURL and install CURL. Now I'm actually going to output this to a text file because I know that there's a lot of things that pop up under the C URL and without the ability to scroll I need it to go somewhere I can actually read it. So let's go to the, v, the output file and there's this thing for R, I don't really care about R, still I need stuff for R. Here's the C URL port we're looking for. 
It's in user ports, FTP, CURL. That's pretty simple, you know. It's got, they're in logical places. It's not in like user ports, bunny, rabbit, dog, kitten. No, it's in FTP, CURL because that's it's just it's a logical place for it to go. So we go ahead and CD into FTP, CURL. And now if I want to install it, I would go ahead and do make install, and this will actually install all of the software. Now, that being said, uh, you also always want to do a clean because after you do the install, there's probably going to be some temporary files and some just garbage stuff left over that doesn't automatically get removed. Now, if you make a, if you build a lot of ports and you don't clean up your directories, this is a really easy way to start losing little pieces of your hard drive, uh, just disk storage space. And then you're going around going, why am I out of disk storage space? And it's because you have all these leftover build files. So always just tack on that clean at the end, unless you're planning on building this thing more than one time which in which case you won't want to do because if you clean it, you're going to have to redo it again. And here we go. And I am actually going to fast forward through a lot of this because it will take a while. Again, not because it takes a while to compile from source, which sometimes it does, you know, you have, that is one of the, one is one of the drawbacks about getting software built for your machine is that you do, it does take a little bit longer. Um, but again, if you have an i7 processor or even a, you know, a core two duo with a couple of gigs of RAM, it still outbeats this one virtual processor with one gig of RAM. And there we go, it is installed. Now, I will say that I did install CURL earlier, so a lot of the dependencies that were needed had already been compiled. And if you remember correctly um, from last week, that if you build something, you actually have to build all the dependencies if it finds that those dependencies are missing, which, you know, in the beginning can make your ports take a long time to build. But as you go along and you get things that other things are dependent on, it doesn't take as much time. So now I can go ahead and just run CURL on Google. And there we go, I have CURL. Now if I want to uninstall it, I just do make deinstall. And there you go, it's gone, just like that. Now another thing you wanna do is you probably wanna upgrade some of your ports. Now if you wanna upgrade the ports tree, you actually do port snap update, and it checks, and my ports tree is already up to date. Um, there's another thing called Portmaster, which we will go ahead and search for. Name equals Portmaster, and it's there. Now I already have it installed, which this is not an installed on the base system. So if you do want it, you will need to build it from source. It's actually a super fast build. It takes like about two seconds. It's a very minimal. Let's go ahead and check all the things that need to be updated. So let's go ahead and do Portmaster-L, which will list all the things that need to be upgraded. And let's go ahead and do it again to this output file because scrolling is a turd in here. And it's checking. And there we go. So now we do port map, now we have EI into the output file. And now you will see that there are actually four different types of ports. There are root ports, truck ports, branch ports, and then leaf ports. And this shows all of them. And it does a count of them all. So the main difference between these ports are this. Root ports have, de have no dependencies and they are not a dependency of any other port. Your trunk ports are ports that have no dependencies, but other ports do depend on that. So, you know, libxml, other ports do depend on it. The pkg port up here in the root port, it has no dependencies and nobody else depends on it. These are not gonna be too many. You know, your package manager, your port master, those kind of things, but not gonna be many of those. Now your branch ports, they have dependencies and are dependent on. Wow, it's right there in the thing. I was reading it from my notes, but it's right there. Isn't that cool? And then your leaf ports. They have dependencies, but they're not dependent on. It's a very eloquent system that's really easy to use. And if you want to upgrade them, you just go ahead and do portmaster-a, and then you can add the F flag if you want to force it. Uh, update. And now I'm going to leave some links in the description below on how to make your own port. I've actually never done this and really have no idea how to do it. But... I'm kind of curious and I really kind of want to get one of my ports into the FreeBSD tree. So if I do end up making one, I'll definitely document it here on this channel. Well, that about wraps it up for today. I want to thank everybody for watching. And if you like this video, go ahead and give it a like, like down below. And if you want to subscribe, go ahead. If you're already a subscriber, thank you for being here. I really appreciate you coming back week after week to hear these terrible jokes and 
learn about FreeBSD and all the BSDs actually. Quick shout out though, if you like my artwork that I use for my thumbnail, um, my artist's name is Raymond Chaka. He's extremely reasonably priced and a very good artist. I'll leave a link to him in the description below uh, for anybody who wants to contact him and get some logo work done. He is extremely well priced and I cannot recommend anybody more. Thank you for tuning in this week and I'll see you next time.